Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hi there. So, guys, we wanted to bring up again some topics just to cover them again and hopefully bring some clarity as we ourselves are always getting more clarity mm -hmm. and learning more stuff um, through our connection with the different guides and going deeper and deeper in meditation. So we're going to be talking about, well, the rainbow body, Merkaba, ascension. What are we really? Where are we really going? You know, that whole big picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what is all of this ascension stuff about? You know, what's the difference between this and that? And, um, you know, it's it's a good question. Fair question. It is. And we had a great channeling today with the uh, Galactic Federation, um, some of which we'll share here, some of the topics that we discussed. Um, some stuff we can't directly playback from a tape recording I did because it touches on subjects that are uh, being spoken about plainly that are so sensitive we wouldn't um, still be able to do what we're doing. So we have to uh, relay it to you as best we can with the, our own little EE Arts living language. Yes, our little EE <laughs> Arts lingo. Exactly. So one of the things that came through from Laurel, uh, who is our main Pleiadian contacts. Uh, we have uh, several Pleiadian contacts in the Galactic Federation, but Lorella is our main one, Kira as well. One of the things that she wanted us to get across, and she has been stressing, 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 is balance, harmony, taking care of the physical body, and letting people know, you know the possibilities of ascension. There's really kind of nothing more important than that. And what we're talking about, too, in Ascension primarily is Ascension out of this 3D, 4D matrix that is and has been controlled during this time period of the Kali Yuga. And just before, just after, there's like these transition periods. It's not like it just stops, you know, like so many people were expecting on, you know, December, the end of the Mayan calendar, December 21st, 2012, boom. We're all gone. Where'd they all go? Where do we all go? You know, no, it didn't happen that way. There's a transition. There's a shift in consciousness. It's it's not like we're just here today, gone tomorrow. Although with the rainbow body, that is basically what happens. Sometimes it takes days, weeks, months. Other times uh, they are here today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's really interesting. And and curious when it comes to ascension and ascending out of this matrix is like a behavioral um, type of thing, you know, learning the differences between technologies, you know, the technology we use in our hands and then the technology of our bodies. What can our bodies do to help bring us to further enlightenment? And that's where we want to head. We want to head into technologies of mind, body, spirit, earth. That's where we want to go. And recognize that this is a technology. So, you know, this is something I just wanted to bring up. You know, when we see the chakras, they're always, you know, shown to be lotuses. They're lotus flowers, right? And then when we look at this photo here, this is the photo of this gentleman, this monk on the left. This is him. Uh, and basically a rainbow body. Look at the base. It's a lotus. Mm -hmm. Now, the chakras themselves are whirling vortexes constantly pulling in energy. Tremendous energy. And, you know, this is what it's all about. Now, the rainbow body, what Cindy has been getting when we're asking details. And by the way, there have been tens of thousands of cases of monks achieving a rainbow body. This particular photo is from 2011 for the rainbow body of Chogyur Ling, Lingpa Rinpoche. Pretty wild stuff. Ultimately, we are light. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of pretty simple. We're consciousness. We're energy. We are light. And we operate on multiple d densities or dimensions. We operate in multiple realities at one time. But we can shift our perspective in a, in a sense, up to a much higher density and kind of vacate the lower realms, mm -hmm. so to speak. And we can 
manipulate our light. We can change our light. So it's like plasma. We're just a real slow, dense, moving form of light that can be gently guided and balanced and changed. So that can change our whole life and how things come at us too by, you know, balancing and dealing with our bodies or our light bodies. And here we see on the left another Buddhist monk. And then on the right, his body fitting in a small cooler. Mm -hmm. A small cooler. Some of these monks will go into meditation and they will know when it's time. And they'll shift their consciousness and their bodies will still be alive. And yet shrinking, visibly shrinking. I know it sounds crazy, but this has been documented time after time after time. And also they, they wait days. Uh, many days sometimes uh, before they do anything because they are still technically alive often as the bodies can get down to nothing uh, eventually being left but hair and nails. Yep, It's incredible. Here we see a body there in a small little box and you can see the head is still kind of large but the rest of it's just shrunk away. Mm -hmm. This is wild stuff. As you see this one, you can see over here, he's he's shrinking down into nothingness again. Because again, the physical body is just a vehicle. It's just, just a shell that normally we just vacate and move on. Sometimes this process can be achieved through deep meditation, use, use of mantras. And as we've shared before, uh, Yeshua is all about ascension and teaching ascension uh, principles, techniques, and he was here to share that with us. Now, what we've gotten is that he didn't really die on the cross as the story is told. Uh, but in reality, he ascended in a rainbow body just, just like these other masters. And so when you see uh, him afterwards, he's in a body of light. And that's ultimately what we are talking about. Here's another photo. Pretty wild stuff. Mm -hmm. Very, very wild. And I can remember parts of two lives as a um, Tibetan, uh, you know, well, on the border of Nepal. I remember Nepal and Tibet is where I was in at least one life. And I do have visions of looking out of a cave over a plain, a cave that's a little bit up off the ground. And that's basically where we lived and, and meditated. And Cindy's uh, verified that, as well as uh, a couple other psychics have verified that with me. As you see this one, just kind of shifting and becoming uh, basically just light. Mm -hmm. Another one, there's been tens of thousands of these cases, and here he is, before on the left and during the process on the right. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing stuff, but it's just not just one case. Again, many, many documented cases. And I just thought that was a cool one. Now, I, I had an encounter when doing uh, meditation and mantras uh, to Osset, which is also known in the West as Isis. And she appeared to me using my third eye, uh, very much like this, except for more golden, more of a golden energy to it. And it was um, very wild. But when we look into the legends of the ancient and shining ones that were here, these benevolent beings that were here and taught mankind all these secrets and, and how to achieve things like ascension uh, in the old golden ages, the good times that, we, that we've had. And so one of the things that we did get verification of uh, from the Galactic Federation, from Laurel, was that like the cycle we're on now, the yuga cycles are correct. You know, they are correct. And so we do descend into uh, this darker area on a regular basis. And we are basically in the area where vibrationally, the same sort of thing happens time and time again. And these darker beings, that the ones that are really controlling the planet now, and, and others, as this is truly a galactic war out there. This really is a 
multi-dimensional galactic war that's ongoing, not just on Earth, and not just on Earth in different densities, but in other locations as well. Yes, it is. And it can get quite complex and very um, <laughs> difficult to understand because we're, we only know what we're told from those that teach us. And there's so much more out there to be explained and understood. And there's only so many words that you have to explain this to people who've only been taught one certain thing. Yeah, most definitely. And, you know, here, you know, this is talking about the Old and New Testaments as well. You know, like we hear in the New Testament, you know, lo, I'll tell you a secret. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. In an instance, at the last trumpets, you know, it's, it's just that changing we're all going to change when when the big wave comes in, which we were talking about on the earlier video mm -hmm. today. And, you know, if we're not able to handle the energies, then we'll simply find ourselves back in a 3D, 4D loop on a different planet because the Earth is going to ascend this time. And, you know, we'll find ourselves incarnated somewhere else mm -hmm. and still under basically the same sort of system if we cannot rise up and above it. Um, same sort of control grid. Because again, it's all about vibration and frequency. It's not about dogma. Not at all. Dogma doesn't do anything but divide and confuse and cover over the truth. Mm -hmm. Because the truth doesn't belong to any one religion or philosophy. It's, it's just universal. It's the laws of the universe. It, it's how things truly operate. So, you know, instead of thinking in terms of uh, original sin and wrath of God, you know, think more in terms of the law of cause and effect. And, you know, we could look to the seven uh, hermetic principles. We could go into the Kybalion and see, uh, again, in the mystery traditions in the West, that's where the truth lies. It's it's not in taking things literally. We've got to look deeper than that. It's time to, you know, grow up out of those type of lower mindsets because, you know, we are, we are so much more. And there's all sorts of hints of that. Yeah, we see Enoch and Elijah. Well, what happened to them? So, according to some traditions, they're now Metatron and Sandalphon, two archangels. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Cindy has gotten information about them as well. And they are very powerful beings, although they are actually different, even though they're thought of as almost kind of like brothers. They are very, very different beings. They, they are very, very different. Yeah, but they are, you know, most definitely strong, benevolent forces. So it's fascinating. You know, it, again, there's been so many cases. Modern times, and then there's records going back into ancient times of people. And I'll give you guys the links so you could read into it more if you want. It's just so fascinating to see and there's stories going back to the 8th century AD and even earlier about this but ultimately you know we are consciousness now Cindy was also verifying that this is the highest level of attainable consciousness and enlightenment so at this point you basically can go anywhere do anything yeah, you, you sure can. <laughs> if you can attain this, you can attain anything. You've, you've done this, you've done that. Most of these beings that do this are still teaching it. So that's what their loop is kind of. But they also have the choice if they want to go back and live another normal human life, they can do it. Um, that's not to say that their bodies wouldn't be different. They might actually have more challenges because when they do come in, if they do come in to do a semi-normal life, they're going to have an imbalance of light and um, their body. But anyhow, these guys, once they do this, you, you've attained it all. You can it, do what you want. Basically like an ascended master. Yes. You know, where you could choose to come back and, and help others and teach others. So, you know, this is the highest level. And it is, it's different than, say, the Merkaba. The Merkaba is something that does allow us to travel in between different densities, you know, escape this 3D, 4D loop. Really, this time period is all about getting out of the control matrix that we're in. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. 
getting out of the control matrix. And so our choices are very, very important. Not necessarily, you know, going up to this level where now all of a sudden you could go up to 70, you could go anywhere you want to merge back into source. What we're talking about here is the ascension that leads outside of this dark control system that has been uh, so heavily controlled by these dark entities, which we've talked about, you know, the grays, the tall, short grays. Uh, the Draco, the reptilians, there's different reptilian hybrids, there's different human hybrids as well. Uh, they're all under this, ultimately an AI kind of uh, consciousness that is kind of doing its own thing out there and controlling things and bringing things down. It's like when we see these orbs, they're consciousness. And, and of course, there's been so many photos taken of orbs over the years, different spirit orbs many of which you could see faces in. And I've done that myself too and, and taken photos and seen clear faces mm -hmm. in these orbs because, oh, these are people. Yep. yep. Plain, plain and simple, these are people. Now, some of them are also elemental beings as well, not mm -hmm. just necessarily human beings, but elemental. But in some cases, we could actually make out the familiar faces Uh of past loved ones and friends. And sometimes they seem to be having a good time yep. looking at us, make ourselves look like a fool. Yes, just having a good time right along with us, for sure. Yeah, as, as when I asked Cindy about this one, you said this was? The, these are elementals, they're traveling together. Elemental beings traveling together. And there, you can see a face in that one too. Mm -hmm. And even the stars themselves are conscious beings. Mm -hmm. Everything is consciousness. So, you know, we're all consciousness. And, you know, many are heading now towards having a fully activated light body. And so, again, with the rainbow body, often what's left is just hair and nails or a, a complete shrunken body. Like you ever seen those shrunken heads? Well, the whole body is shrunken uh, or nothing. I mean, there could literally be just kind of like soot or residue, residue yeah. left you know because the body is gone in a flash mm -hmm. and you know so we wanted to like kind of bring a, hopefully a little clarity to that now developing the merkaba is wonderful because then you can really get around mm -hmm. and the rainbow body is even like a notch above mm -hmm. uh the merkaba and the merkaba is why people thought angels had wings because you're actually seeing this. Mm -hmm. And as I'm doing, you know, standing meditation and drawing in light force in, in my Qigong practice, I'll ask Cindy, what are you seeing? And she'll say, well, you got your wings on, yep. you know, because the, the Merkaba the light body is expanding way out past the physical body. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes it varies, you know, the, when, when he's running energy, energy is acting in a different way. So when I, Look at that energy. There's all kind of different patterns. So yeah, and that varies uh, according to the hand positions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, em embracing the tree is one that's practiced often, and that one seems to really solidify the merkaba. Uh, there's different positions like holding the golden urn, uh, waiting in the river, uh, or just gathering down around the lower dantian, which often looks more like a, a black hole sucking in energy to it. New message. So I just thought this was cute. You know, move this, the, the physical body, clean it on the inside, mm -hmm. free your mind, and become basically yep. enlightened. That guys. seems pretty simple. It is. It is. You know, so this is a beautiful thing. We have so many opportunities in front of us right now. The changes are so positive, and if we didn't have the influence of the dark ones, it literally would feel like we're manifesting heaven on earth right now. And we will. It's just a matter of getting to that time period where they can't hold on anymore. So what they want to do is they just, you know, like any dark entity would, they want to take you down with the ship. Yeah. They want to grab onto you. They want to perhaps um, make an emotion like, yeah. Uh, okay. Boxers throw right crosses. Mm -hmm. Now, when they lead with their lead arm, it's called a 
Well, J A B. Oh yeah. So yeah, you know, when, you're, when you're when you're thinking about this, you know, there's a lot of tools to ascension, and there's a lot of tools that they're using to stopping it. Yeah. So you know, we're all about ascension in this time period because ascension leads to freedom, and it leads to escaping the control grid, and we definitely don't want anybody out there to find themselves in their next life incarnating back into the same old system again. No, we don't. You know, we want to give you guys information. So if you're curious and you want to know this and understand it and become dedicated and work for it, here you go. Most definitely. And again, it's not about dogma. Yeah, they'll use the same old tricks to, if we're in different places. They'll use the same systems, the same tricks. They'll have new wording. Uh, perhaps they'll have just new lingo. But it's all about divide and conquer, get us fighting each other. Lower us down into frequencies of jealousy, hatred, uh, anger, everything that leads to those lower vibrations that keeps us from ascending up and out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So thank you guys for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Do check out Medicinal Foods. You could get some amazing products there, including CBD, which is very helpful for so many things. And we can't do it without the Patreons and Ko-Fi yep. support as well. So, guys, God bless and namaste. Namaste.